Hey, hey, hey. Sunday night. Sunday afternoon, right? Early evening. Time to come in and focus our energy for the week. If you have a few moments, come on over and join me. Terry Ann Hyman, Natural Forces Studio, and the Empowered Spirit Circle here on Facebook. Come on in, join me. Let's focus our energy for the week. Let's look at the cards that are coming up for all of us and see how we can really tune in. Focus and clarity, that's the words we're using for this week, for the beginning of this month of May. Focus and clarity. We've had so much shift in energy since April and March, and now we're really moving forward. Have you noticed? Can you tell? Have you noticed and can you tell? Let me know. Come on in and join me. Figure out where you are right now, what's going on beneath the surface. Really tuning in to our spiritual practice is really important. So let's just take a few moments and do that. All right, I see a few people coming in. Yay. Hey, Millie, how are you? Hey, Brett, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. What a great weekend. Really beautiful down here in the south, warm and hot, summer-like. Had a really amazing weekend with my spiritual development leadership training group. Tense topic this week. It was all about death and transitions. Very intense, but so needed. So needed. We really had a great teacher. Atma came in. Brian Halterman came in and taught us about the Buddhist belief in death and dying. Really great, really great weekend, really great conversation. Talking about consciousness. One of the reasons why we need a spiritual practice, really important. You know, I talk about a lot of reasons, like why do we need it? Help us know who we are, to build confidence, to open our intuition. But it also helps us in the consciousness of death. Talking about when the mind separates from the body. And when we have a spiritual practice, we're really able to work with these things. We're really able to work with our karmic issues. We're really able to work with soul work. Really important. Really important that we do that. Very fascinating weekend. It was a really great opportunity for all of us to really appreciate our spiritual practice, what we come in here for, and the work that we're doing. Very powerful. So yeah, why do you have a spiritual practice? Or do you have a spiritual practice? Which is it? Do you have one? Or why do you not have one? Which is it for you? Let me know what you think about having a spiritual practice. All right, I think it's important. I talk about this a lot. So what does it mean for you? Do you have a spiritual practice going on? Let me know what you think about that. Is it consistent? Do you have a place that you do it in? I know we talked about building a spiritual practice and I know that we talked about we talked about having a sacred space. Do you do it? What have you noticed for you when you really honor that part of who you are? What do you notice? These are kind of the questions I'm kind of asking right now, wondering to know what's going on. Hey, Brad, I see a little wave there. I think it's really important as we move through a lot of these challenging times. Right now, many of us are noticing we're in a bit of transition. Maybe you notice it for yourself. A lot of things happen this time of year in May. School starts to end. Kids start to shift. Our energy starts to shift too. We're halfway there through spring, moving into that new season of summer. Soon enough, it's starting to feel like it. But our spirit is shifting too right now. We've had a hard start to winter. Where are we? We've had a hard start to spring. And now we're starting to be able to put our work out there. And we're going to see that as we move through this week. All right. We had that big old full moon last week that really shifted lots and lots of energy. This week, we're going to start out with a lot of energy. Tomorrow, you're going to feel like a lot of great energy is coming forward. You may notice a little bit more of your deeper truths coming forward, like something you have to share, something you have to put out there. So honor that. Put it out there and feel those passions coming forward. Just be a little careful that you're not flinging all right, a little bit of excess energy or letting it come out too passionately or a little defensive or a little bit with anger. So being careful about that because we want to bring up this energy. We're going to see the beginning of the week. We've got a little bit of that Uranus and Aries energy finishing out and that's going to really help that expansive energy. So you're going to feel that as you go to start your work week, Monday and Tuesday. By Wednesday, Wednesday, we're going to start to pull in a little bit. By Wednesday, we're going to start to come into a little bit of the waning of the moon with coming into Pisces, and we're going to go a little bit deeper into ourselves. So we'll start at a peak, and we'll come down, and then some of that energy will pick up by the end of the weekend. We're going to really get into a little bit of that 
deeper truths, like I said, of who we are, sharing that energy out there and bringing that forward. So just being careful and mindful, right, of where you say and what you say and how you bring that approach forward. It can sometimes come out a little abruptly, so we have to really be careful, careful of our throat chakras as well as we move through the week. Transitions can be difficult. What are they for you? Are you noticing that you're in a transition? I know for me, I've been through many, and I'm actually talking about this. I'm on the Reiki World Summit coming up. I'll put a link below. I forgot to do that. I'll put a link below. Check it out. It's a complimentary entry into the summit every day, starting on the 21st. Lots of speakers will be talking about various aspects of how Reiki can help. Reiki being a universal life force energy. I'm going to be talking about transitions. Transitions and how Reiki can really help us to move through with ease and with peace. So many different transitions, right? What do you notice for you about transitions? They can be big ones. Like one of the biggest ones for me was going through that divorce. Or maybe it's losing a job or gaining a job. Or maybe it's your health. Maybe it's a move. Maybe it's a relationship. So many transitions that we can go through. And of course, one of the biggest ones, as we were talking about all weekend in my group, was, was death. And how Reiki is so amazing when we use this energy for that as well. So these are the things I'll be sharing on the summit in the interview, I'm very honored to be part of this guest, this lineup, authors, teachers, really great. You can check it out, the entry, I'll put the link below, it's a complimentary entry. If you want to have the recordings, you can pay to have the recordings, but you don't have to. It's just a matter of catching them each day. So share it out, all right? I'll just post the link. The more people that find out about this, the more we can share this energy out there. So one of the things that we look into towards when we talk about transitions is clarity and focus. Lots of times we want to hang on to the past. We want to stay in that stuck energy. We only want to remember the good parts, right? We forget that these transitions and struggles help us to move forward. Reiki can help us with that. It can help us to really ease that old energy out so that we can focus our energy. We can bring in clarity about our path. Lots of times it's the fear, it's the fear of what's going to happen to me. And so we stay in this state of chaos. I know I've done it before. How about you? Have you ever noticed that? That you stay a little bit like, oh, I can't make up my mind. And so you get into the drama and you stay into some of that uncertainty. So really when we work on that, we look at what is the fear underneath that. And when we can move away that fear, the clarity will come forward. It will open up for you. It really will. But sometimes we have to move that energy. When we're holding on, it's really hard. So what is it for you? Have you noticed that for yourself? Have you noticed some of the transitions that can be hard for you in life? And what is it you do? Post below. I'd like to hear. What is it that you do when you move through transitions? All right. We're moving through that kind of energy. So hopefully that's going to help you to understand it a little bit better for yourself and where you are with that. All right. So just take a nice deep inhale. We're going to do a meditation before we go to the cards. We're going to just look into a little bit of that energy of focusing, of offering clarity, and releasing the fear. So let's just take a few moments if you can. Take a nice deep inhale. And just exhale away. Inhaling. And just begin to bring all of that energy in. All the energy you've scattered throughout the week, time to bring it in. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. As you exhale away, just send the breath all the way down deep into the earth. And as you inhale, opening up that breath, inhaling, bringing it up through the spine, up into the heavens. And as you exhale, release it all the way back down deep into the earth. Centering your energy, calling back all those many parts that you've scattered through the week. Centering, calling back your spiritual body. So many times it gets far off, bringing it back. Feeling that alignment right into the center. Shoulders and shoulders, hips and hips. As we open up, calling in, breathing up the body. And exhale, breathing all the way back down, deep into the earth. And let us just call in. Call in Divine Spirit. Call in your masters and your teachers. Call in your spirit guides. Ask to be guided this week as you open up, as you move through whatever transition it may be for you. Ask to have that guidance come in. We honor the season. We're moving towards that end of the spring. We'll soon be opening to summer. We honor the directions of the east, the south, the west, and the north. Above us, below us. 
right into the very center. Take a deep inhale. And just exhale away the excess, the stress, the running around. Begin to feel your breath, your breath slowing down. Begin to feel a calming energy coming right into the very center. Take a deep inhale. And just go within. And if you want, you can even tap right here very lightly and just ask yourself, where am I right now? Where is that uncertainty for me? Where can I gain some clarity and some focus as I move through this week? Feel the energy moving as you inhale and exhale. Feel the energy moving out, releasing the fear, that excess energy. Let it go. Opening up. Let that new direction come forward for you. What is it? What is the passions and desires that are within you? Ask that energy to come forward. What is it that needs to be let go of? Take a deep inhale. And exhale. Centering the breath. Feel the feet on the floor. Grounding the energy for this week right here in the very center. Feel yourself connected to the earth. Inhaling and exhaling. And just release the tapping. Feel yourself centering, calming down. And just bring that awareness back, coming back. Taking a nice deep inhale and exhale. Good, coming back. So if you didn't catch the Empowered Spirit program last week, it was a really good episode. I did an on-air Akashic Record reading with one of my students who's had a little trouble moving forward, moving through some of this transition energy, moving forward and finding that clarity. And we looked at one of the things that was really blocking her, enabling her to open up and create new spiritual contracts for herself that, so that she can move forward. So check it out. The Empowered Spirit Show last week, a Kaushik Record reading, really, really a great reading, a great episode, really helps to explain the soul work that we can do and how we can help ourselves, help our spirit to move forward in this lifetime. Really exciting episode. Got a lot of feedback from it. Let me know what you think too. And subscribe while you're there. Check it out and subscribe. This week, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the Reiki Summit coming up. I'm going to be talking about transitions, going a little deeper into that conversation, and that'll be out on Wednesday. All right, so let's look at the cards. These are some pretty big transition cards, too. Hey, Thelma. Hey, Cindy. Thank you all for joining me as well. So the first card, which is a universal card for all of us, is the Tower card. This is not one of the most favorite cards to come forward. We see this nice rooted tree Two bolts of lightning, fire at the top, transformation, definitely transformation. So definitely this is the energy the universe is supporting us all in this. Now, I like when this card comes forward because we can be more in charge of the transformations in our lives. Be more in charge of letting go of what is no longer serving. And that's what we have to do right now. When we let those top branches fall away, we can open up to new energy. All right, when we, we don't deal with this, when we don't want to look at this, the tower can really come down all around you. So know this. Know that some of those things you're letting go is helping you to bring that new growth. And I think that's really key for where we are right now. Let some of the old stuff go. Let it burn away so that you can bring in new growth, new work, new projects. Very important right now. So how do we do that? All right, so if you chose card number one, this is the Five of Cups, all right? So this is a little card that shows a little bit more healing that needs to come forward, all right? But it does remind us not to keep our head hung low. It reminds us to lift up. Look at the darkness here. Look at the light that comes up. Fives are all about change. All about change, sometimes can recommend struggle too, but kind of like the Tower card, when we're aware of that going on, when we offer ourselves a little more love, which is the Cups, we can lift our head up, we can move forward in the energy and create a new path for us. Have some of that horsepower come forward to do this. Don't let yourself be caught in that victim energy. Don't let yourself have your head down too much. 
Let it come up. Look at the dark. Look at the light. Lift up to the light so that you can also again be in charge of making some of those transformations for you. Really important. All right. If you chose number two, number two is, this is not a fun card either, but it's the Ten of Swords. But tens are about done. Energy is done. And this is of the mental plane. So what are you struggling with? Look how this is coming through the eyes. Look how it's stabbing in the back. This also reminds us not to get caught up in that drama, the melodrama of your life or somebody else's life. This is about a little bit of that martyr energy where you're taking all that on for you. It's done. Let that energy go. All right, really important because as you let that energy go, that's kind of like the top of the trees. Let that go so you can build new possibilities for yourself. Time to let it go. All that mental chatter, time to let it go. That's what the swords are about. Tens are about completion. What can you let go of? What can you put to rest? It is time, 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 time. Now, the third card is a really nice card for all of us, the three of wands. This is all about creating that dream energy, creating those visions, all right? Look at the center of this card. The rainbows are in there. So it's putting stuff together. Uh, wands are about our passions. They're about our desire. So this really helps us to bring these visions, all right? Visioning is what this is about, to bring those visions forward. Really important that we do that, right? Where can you bring some of those visions forward for you? This is about centering. This is about focus, all right? Which is definitely the theme of where we are right now. So don't get caught here. Get caught in here. Get caught in the center where you can vision, where you can imagine what's coming forward for you and continue that work. Don't get caught in the victim energy either. Lift your head up. Find that center. Find the center of your passions and your desires, especially as we go through this week. That's what the energy is about. Bring in some of that energy forward. All right. A lot of us have felt a little bit stuck in the beginning of the spring, and now this is when we're opening up. This is when we're knowing what is growing for us and where we can go with the visioning. Beautiful card. Beautiful card for visioning as we move through this week. Really important. Energy is shifting. It is changing. If you're not doing your work, you're going to feel a little shooken up. So all the more reason. Create that spiritual practice for you. Create that space. Come to it. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, you will see a big difference. You really will. And if you need some help, reach out. Reach out and let me know. I can offer you some tips. All right? In the group, we post them all the time. But what is it you can do for you right now? All right? That was going to help you to do that. So take a deep inhale. Let me know if these cards resonate with you or not. Let me know how they sit with you, whatever you chose. Can you take this advice out into the week? Can you look for the signs around you? All right, that's what we really want to do with these cards. We want to really find those signs, those symbols that help you to really take this energy and apply it. We've got some good energy this week, all right? We're going to start off on a high energy week, and it'll kind of drop a little bit, but that's kind of good. We'll go into ourselves. So careful of your actions, careful of your words, but look for those deeper truths. That's what we're going through right now. Look for those deeper truths. Definitely. All right. Take a nice deep inhale. And exhale away. Let me know if anybody has any questions. Hang out for a minute. Pull a card for anybody. Let me know how they resonate with you. Give me a thumbs up. Give me something. Let me know you're out there listening. All right. We're going to keep this set at 6 o'clock for about another week or so, and then we're going to switch to some summer hours because it's a beautiful evening out. We all need to still be outside. So look for that change in time coming up soon. All right. Take a deep inhale. Finally. Yay. I got some hearts. Thank you so much. Yay. 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 So check out the Akashic Reading on the Empowered Spirit Show if you didn't see it. All right, listen in, sign up for the Reiki Summit. It's online, easy to download and find out more information about how much Reiki can help you. If you're locally, I'm going to be over at Chocolata. It's a chocolate shop here in downtown Birmingham on Saturday for Mother's Day. Going to be doing um, readings, have some of my jewelry there. And Chocolata has a beautiful gift box for mom. So come on down and join us. Downtown Birmingham, a lot of fun. Have some Reiki classes coming up in June as well. You can find all that on my website, naturalforcesstudio.com. All right, guys, follow me on Facebook. Send me emails from Instagram. Let me know how you like that Empowered Spirit Show. Look for the next episode. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope this helped you to focus your energy for the week. Be strong. Be empowered. Tap into your spirit. It's there for you.
Thanks again for listening to your spirit. Namaste.